Folks at Windward Flutes were kind enough to reach out over Facebook. We had never really spoken before, and they had seen some videos, I guess, that I'd done, and I just wanted to touch base and see how I was getting on with the flute, which was really nice of them. And it occurred to me that it might be worth taking another look at this instrument, because when I did that first review video, I'd really only had the thing maybe a week or so, I think. Maybe with all instruments, but I can tell certainly with the flute, you need a little bit more time like that to grow into it before you can probably cast an accurate decision on what you think of it and how it works with you and how the flute responds to your playing, because not every flute is the same. And it does take a bit of an adjustment to, to figure out that homage. So four years later, let's see how it sounds now, and let's see how it compares with my now 20-year-old Terry McGee flute. got it, I think I remember using the phrase less forgiving when speaking compared to what I was used to, which is the only flute that I've, I've played recently anyway, was the Terry McGee. And I think that still holds true. It's definitely less forgiving. But what I found over four years of playing it is it's made me a better player. I've said it probably a thousand times that embouchure is 90% of playing the flute. And with the windward, you have to be very, very precise. You have to be very accurate uh, to get that good solid tone. With other flutes, at least with my McGee, by comparison anyway, when I don't hit it exactly, it still sounds all right. It's just kind of soft and a little mushy and not quite as responsive. With the windward, if you miss it, sometimes you get nothing. So. You just don't have a huge amount of uh, margin for error to get that angle right. But when you do, it's got that really beautiful, sharp, biting sound that you that you want out of a wooden flute. That's kind of the difference in sound between these flutes and the classical flutes anyway. So this one, when you hit it, really exemplifies that. This has become my flute of choice when I want to practice because of that, um, that low margin for error. It makes me pay more attention. And what I've really noticed after all this time, when I switch back to the McGee, which unfortunately I kind of have to do for gigs because I really do need the keys. I, I sort of depend on that for variation and, and for some specific tunes that really do actually need them. The other kind of dumber reason why I stick with the Blackwood flute with the McGee flute is because my windward doesn't fit on my stand. See? That's the problem. Now, yes, I could probably just get a smaller diameter tube here and rebuild it, but I'm too lazy to do that when this one fits just fine. That aside, really, it's the keys. I, I do kind of rely on the keys, particularly the F natural key, because we do play some stuff in D minor and I just sort of need that. So I can't really play this on stage yet. Windward is making a fully keyed version now, which I would love to try out one of these days. It, particularly because they do the same design, the Pratt design that I'm used to from my McGee flute, I, it's got a louder tone. So it's it's very similar as far as what I'm physically used to holding, which is great. But for practice, this is the best tool I could possibly have because it, it actually makes me sound better when I switch. My brain is more focused on getting that embouchure exactly right and it translates between multiple instruments, which is cool. <laughs> Probably isn't going to be a real big surprise, but it's held up exceptionally well, which is a pretty good indicator of build quality. Again, not that I would have expected anything less, but every time I have to take it apart to clean it or oil it, I'm impressed. I just get to look at it and see these fine details and the, the level of craftsmanship that's gone into this thing, and it's, it's just impressive to look at. These flush mounted rings, I've never seen anybody else do that. I think that's a really cool look. Uh, I wasn't quite sure what to make of that at first because I'm just used to the, the larger. This is what everybody else does. Uh, and that's great and it looks nice. So I initially wasn't sure what to think about it, but it's just, it's clean. It's smooth. It's a really lovely design. Maybe this is just a sign that I've taken reasonably good care of it, but it looks exactly the same as when I bought it, as far as I can tell. Strangely heavy. And I'm actually going to compare the weight of these two for my own curiosity more than anything. I don't think I did this last time uh, when I did the review video, but for a keyless flute, it's heavy. It, you know, I can feel it. 
So let me just see what we're looking at here. 13 ounces exactly, okay. Versus 359 grams. Yeah, it's heavier, interesting. Almost half an ounce heavier. And there's no keys. It seems odd, seems a little odd. So definitely heavier. And I'd really be curious how the keyed flutes would compare from a weight and balance standpoint. Um, balance wise, it's fine. It, there's nothing, you know, it, it balances exactly as you'd expect. It's just overall a little bit heavier. <laughs> See how that compares here. We'll try and play the same tune, about the same tempo. <laughs> Similar, right? I, I think so. You just get a little bit more of that, that crispness, that sharp angle sound. <laughs> that bite, you know, that, that's just so stereotypical of a really good wooden flute sound. They've managed to do that really well uh, when you get the embouchure correct, when you get that angle right. So again, getting back to the whole point of it making me a better player, that's what I'm looking for. That's the sound that I'm trying to always just get, improve upon a little bit, chasing that dragon of really strong low D sound and just that really sharp bitey sound across the whole instrument. That, uh, that you can get pretty well when you do it right, when you're paying attention on a whistle. So let me know what y'all think. I know some of you guys do whistle and flute and have reached out to a, a few different makers. Their information is down below if you want to get in touch with them. Um, what do you guys think? What's the comparison sounding like? Am I out of my mind? Is it not making me sound any better? I hope that's not the case. Hopefully I've improved over the last four years or so. Uh, and if I have, I do, I think I owe a lot of it to this instrument. I think it's definitely made me a better player. So let me know what y'all think of these sounds of these things, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.